Nigerians woke up to a rather painful death of Elizabeth Ochanya, a 13-year-old who was allegedly sexually harassed and sodomized by a certain Andrew Buja and his son Victor Obuja for five years consecutively. The events that led to her death has sparked off a nationwide protest among different activists, groups and non-governmental organizations calling for justice for Ochanya. One of such is USOSA, Unity Schools All Students Association. President General of USOSA, Lawrence Wilbert, and Chief the ANNA Financial Secretary USOSA dropped by at Plus TV Africa to share their thoughts on the matter. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen, to Plus TV Africa, and thank you for granting us this interview. We are happy to have you, Mr. Will Bett. Correct. Uh, thank you. President Lawrence. General of uh, you, you Unity Sosa. Schools All Students Association. Association. And um, Mr. Anene, the FinSec. So you're the money man for this. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so we're going to have another conversation on money. <laughs> thank so you. thank you very much for coming to us. So, Elizabeth Ochanya. She's been the case. Everybody has been talking about her, and your association is actively involved. So I'll begin with you, Mr. Wilbert. Please bring us up to speed to the events that led to the death of uh, Elizabeth. God rest her. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, now, uh, let me place it this way. You saw, sir, we are a coalition of 104 alumni associations, of which Federal Government Girls College Boko is one of our constituent members. We got to know um, about this as a USOSA exco um, practically six days ago. Mm. And we quickly uh, swung to action to find out exactly what's, what's gone on. And the information we've received thus far, um, working with or getting information from the, independent, the uh, Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, mm -hmm. who are doing a great FIDA. job on ground, as a following. Um, we have a young student girl who's been raped, sexually abused from the age of eight. Mm -hmm. From the age of 12, um, she now became a student of the Federal Government Girls College, Boko. Boko. Now, earlier on this year, she took ill in school, and the school uh, principal, um, finding out that she was not recovering, um, chose to engage the guardians mm -hmm parents to come take the girl and uh, to aid the, healing, the, the treatment and the healing process. But unfortunately, since then, she had not recovered and eventually passed on. Sadly. Yeah, sadly. Um, now, the caregiver who are taking up this case um, now discovered that, hey, there's some abuse, sexual abuse of this child by the family, mm -hmm. the guardians. Um, and then they have now uh, gone ahead to um, raise the prosecution against them, that getting the police involved. Mm -hmm. And that is what has resulted in the court case, which started off in, um, in August, I understand. Mm -hmm. And even yesterday, they were in court again, and the court case was adjourned to um, November. Mm -hmm. Sadly, Ochania has passed on. Sure. Our, our, our job right now is to see that justice is done, justice for Ochania. Mm -hmm. And justice being done means getting the culprit prosecuted. And also, we now look at the other Ochanias. Out there. Out there. What can be done as an intervention for them right now to stop abuse of girl child, to stop abuse of all children? Mm -hmm. So, uh, talking about the culprit, I will ask you this, uh, Mr. Anene. The man involved here is supposed to be the head of department of a higher institution. So you would think that a man of such status would not, you know, be seen behaving in that manner. How do you respond to that? You see, we're hugely disappointed. Personally, you'd want to think that someone who's the head of the department and who lectures in a polytechnic would be somebody who will have values, right? Who would be somebody who would take care of people who are under them, mm -hmm. right? So we can even wonder the students that are under this particular person, how he has been taking care or largely not taking care of them. You see, it's a disappointment and the system seems to have failed China in this case, right? The system in the sense that even 
educated academics, as you said, lecturers, people who have some form of authority over words, or over children, over students, have actually filled the system. This is not the first case we've had. We've had several cases. Mm -hmm. We hear of lecturers um, having sex with their students for marks and all of that. We hear, Absolutely. in this case, we hear of a, a lecturer, head of the department, actually abusing someone who is under his care. You know, it is very disappointing, and that's why we must stand up for against things like this. Mm -hmm. Yesterday when he was brought before the court uh, after the hearing, women who were gathered outside almost lynched him and you know they were carrying placards, one of which read that he must be hanged. Now one might say that's an extreme case of you know saying we, we demand justice, but what would happen in the event that he goes scot-free? That no. I don't expect that um, we would allow him to go scot-free. Uh, we've also looked at the issues around the case. You know, we trust the Nigerian legal system, first of all, I must say. And also, and, and we also know that for a fact that we would also be engaging the legal guys who are going to be prosecuting him because we need to also establish evidence and all that, all that we have to establish to be sure that he is found guilty or whatever it is. We also need to find out why we, the system failed on China. Mm -hmm. Because how many culprits do we have here? We have one standing trial now, but a lot of other people filled her. And what about his son? He's currently at large because he also was allegedly involved in uh, molesting or China. Absolutely. So he's on the run right now. Yeah. The police is on the pursuit. So hopefully he's found soon. They can't run forever. He'll be found and prosecuted, hopefully. Again, that's why this Justice for China campaign is very important to make sure that there's visibility is out there and the, 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 the torch is shown on such individuals. So the justice it has the way to run. So if you look at it, it's not, I mean, how about the wife of the said lecturer? Okay, if we look at the whole ecosystem of that family, we're talking about the wife. Mm -hmm. Now, in all this picture, nobody's talking about the other daughters of the family. We hear of two other daughters of apparently the same age as Ochaya. Mm -hmm. This will have been happening under the watch of the mother of the house, and also you have cousins that in this same scenario um, will have suffered some form of abuse. We don't know about sexual abuse, but even the psychological abuse. So whilst all this is going on, mm -hmm. you know, we would also encourage counselors to shine the torchlight in that direction. So um, there's a whole gamut of, I mean, there's a whole umbrella of people involved in all this. Mm -hmm. Now each and every one of them, first of all, the real culprit should be persecuted. Absolutely. Then we will now, you know, the, the wife, the mother in the house, she could now be prosecuted as an accomplice. Mm -hmm. You know, but like my colleague Chidia said, we believe in the Nigerian justice system and we believe justice will take its course and we'll get our day in court. Okay. Or rather, Ochanya will get a day in court. I hope so. Um, now, talking about relatives, you know, reports have shown recently that when we talk about rape cases, most of the time, those who rape victims are relatives, maybe cousins, uncles, you know, relatives from a victim. Now, with this case, do you think it's still safe to have people send their children to extended family members? Is it safe? A lot of people actually, your sources, have come out of growing up in uncles or resident mm -hmm. homes of aunts and all of that. So you cannot isolate and say because of this, we'll now already say people shouldn't send their words to their relatives. Mm -hmm. You know, For us, it's just to make sure that we are able to put out what is right, act in a manner that is fatherly, motherly. We're mm -hmm. parents, we're fathers, we're mothers. And as we do this, we find out that we rub off the general society at large, mm -hmm. right? We do the right thing, and that's why it's, it's painful that is an academic that's involved in this case. Because mm -hmm. if it were somebody who was a bus conductor, bus driver, you'd be mm -hmm. like, okay, he didn't know much or he doesn't know much. But in this case, it's somebody who ought to be teaching, mm -hmm. someone who ought to be educating others, the others yes. that's involved in this particular case. Right. I'll, I'll bring you back again to why you so sad, uh, took up this case. But before we get there, um, my, my other question would be, this case has gotten a lot of media attention, Thank social you. media, television stations, radio stations, newspapers have carried it, and then, you know, do you think this Ochanya's case would make rape victims come out to speak? Because in most cases, you find out that they're not able to speak. They are threatened, you know, say, if you say, if I hear this, you know, this will happen to you. And so they are terrified for their lives and they keep it to themselves. Do you think this would help 
victims to come up, you know, and say, this is my experience. Because the more we speak, I guess, the more people know what is happening and seek for justice. What's your position on that? Well, our position on that is we hope that is the case. And that's one of the aspirations of this campaign. Okay. Uh, as much as we, we shine the torchlight on this, it also encourages other victims or potential victims to be able to stand up and say, hey, this is happening to me, or this is about to happen to me because I'm seeing movements in that direction, and stand up and talk. Mm -hmm. Once a potential victim, or a victim for that matter, has somebody they can talk to, mm -hmm. you know, it helps now in breaking down or fighting this problem. That's one of the aspirations of shining the torchlight, yes. Mm -hmm. And we hope that is achieved. Okay. So um, the government, Benue State government, they've named a street after Elizabeth Ochanya to immortalize her. Do you think that is enough? I think, um, uh, just to chip in before uh, Chile comes in, mm -hmm. um, that, that was actually done by the Otupo local government, not by the Benue State oh, okay. uh, government, but the local government um, uh, has taken that up and done that. Um, good initiative. Mm -hmm. Just one of many that should happen mm -hmm. to create the more awareness for this issue. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Chidi, your thoughts on that? For me, I would say that um, good thing that the street has been entered by local government. Mm -hmm. we, we applaud them. Um, but I always expect that the government should do a lot more in encouraging the young child and children or people who support them to speak out. Because, you know, you would find that, that families who are involved in this. Okay, Otanya died when? Last week? Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. All of this started, she fell ill in January. So mm -hmm. there's been silence for a long period of time. So I'm even sure the family had even tried to cover this up, right? Which is a big issue. Mm -hmm. So what we'll probably encourage the government to do is let's try and see how we can set up processes where people can actually speak out, where you can actually manage situations like this. Because every average family who's involved in rape, who has a child who's been raped, will not want to bring it out in the open because you say it will probably block her from progressing in life and eventually having to get married and all of that. So I think what the government should do, beyond just putting a street name after her, is that you can have policy statements or you can have um, lectures, or you can have you can support the whole process. Mm -hmm. where, where we find these things happening, you are able to manage the situations, you are able to, you know, give people the encouragement for them to speak out, for them to come out, and then you can protect them. The protection for these victims is what I think the government should place emphasis on. Mm -hmm. Because the NGOs and the, 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 the people who are trying to push them out, most times the families will say, we don't need this coming out. So we probably want the um, legislature around speaking out, or you probably want to be able to encourage and support people who have spoken out so that at least they can live in this society after they have come out. Basically because taking away the stigmatization. The stigma, yes. Because there's a lot of stigma around people who have been raped. I mean, it's nobody's, someone has been raped, someone has been raped. People would argue that, you know, some people put themselves in a situation where they were raped, but nothing Not justifies, nothing, whether you're 10 or you're mm. 82, nothing justifies rape, you mm. know. And so basically the society should learn to move um, uh, move away from stigmatization. If I may just so, add something before you go into your next question. Yes. Um, there is also, the, we talk about government, However, there's also the traditional institution mm. okay. who are major stakeholders. What are the, what do we have the, the local chiefs, the local leaders doing about this? Mm -hmm. We're in Nigeria mm -hmm. and the traditional institution is quite strong. Mm. You know, the local leaders speaking against such, such issues and actually gathering the main folk you know, who are heads of their home to deal with this issue is very important. So we also call out the traditional leaders mm -hmm. to get involved in this and speak against um, such stigma. We talk about rape, but even more so educating or teaching their, their families, their main folk to lead so that such things do not happen in their homes. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask you, Mr. Chidi, so that's the final question. Why did Yusosa take up this particular mm -hmm. case? Strictly straightforward. Yusosa stands for Unity Schools All Students Association. Mm -hmm. The victim was a student of Ferragam and Girls College Boko, mm -hmm. which is part of our constituency, mm -hmm. and is a member, strong member of the association. And when we got information of what had happened to her, her demise, it was very necessary, especially as the new high school had just been sworn yes. in and just came on board, it was very necessary that we made a statement with this. Right. The Unity Schools have suffered over the years and will not continue to allow that happen. Absolutely. We'll continue to stand firm, 
and make sure that all OSAs or all OGAs are strong and are stronger. Together we can do more. Mm -hmm. That's our slogan for the next two, three, four years and for eternity. So we must come together as one. Because if we had been stronger, or we had been stronger this matter, this would never have happened. Mm -hmm. If we had engaged the schools, if we had engaged um, our stakeholders as it concerns federal government colleges, this would never have happened. So awesome. this is the last time we want to see this kind of situation, this kind of story. Mm -hmm. The narrative we want to see going forward is a stronger USOSA. Mm -hmm. The narrative we want to see going forward is a stronger FUGC BOCO. OGA. The narrative one is for the stronger 104 unity schools. Mm -hmm. The narrative one is going forward is the reason, the essence as to why you saw that unity schools were set up in the first instance, which is to groom leaders, right, and not to mourn our leaders or our future leaders. Mm -hmm. But China is a child who we have lost, will continue to mourn, and will never have this happen again. Mm -hmm. so together. Yes, yes, together, together we can do more. Mm -hmm. Together as Absolutely. a society. Absolutely. Just writing on that also, mm -hmm. just buttressing what they're saying. We have the incidents of two years ago of the girls our daughters who died in Queen's College. Mm. It's a sore point. We need to see that justice is done there and seem to be done. You have other cases in other school like that where they've been girl abuse, you know. So riding on that, mm -hmm. you see, we, 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 we've come together to make sure that such things do not happen again. Mm -hmm. Make building on our, or what we have currently and making ourselves stronger. And I think it's also good uh, to make our schools safe places even yes. for the girl and the boy child so yes. that you go to learn and you do not go in to be harmed or to be hurt in whatever way. So Absolutely. thank you very much for coming once again Mr. Mm -hmm. Wilbert and Mr. Chidi Anene from USOSA. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we are glad to have you and we hope that Ochanya will get justice and um, all the Ochanyans out there will also be protected and the story and the narrative of course will change. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.